We then use these two equations to do the load line analysis. In a load line analysis, we can change or analyze our circuit that we can change the operating region, okay? So if you look at the load line analysis, I have the output parameters. Uh, on the y-axis, I got IC, which is the collector current, output current. And on the x-axis, I got the output voltage, which is VCE. From the previous slide here, we found that VCE equals to VCC and IC saturation is VCC over RC. That's how I got these two equations over here. So this point over here represents VCC over RC. And this load line, this point over here represents VCC because VCE equals to VCC, correct? Then you join these two point endpoints and draw a straight line, okay? From your analysis here, from your analysis here, you know the IB here, correct? Say IB is some number over here, okay? So therefore you make a Q point which will be over here. And if you draw a straight line like this, right? You will get your VCE. And if you get your, if you draw a straight line like this, you get your IC values. This VCE value, and this IC value should match with the values that you will get from these equations. That's not the only advantage of doing the load line analysis that it tells you whether you have done your analysis right or wrong, but it also tells us how we can change the Q point around, okay? What if, you know, uh, if I want to move my Q point to uh, say, you know, over here, you know, or over here, how can I do that? Okay, that is what is important doing the load line analysis. And I'll show you how you can do that. Uh, just summarizing, Q point is the operating point. Okay, by the way, is this a, a good operating point for the amplifier? It is in the active region, right? This is all active region. And pretty much in the middle, maybe a little bit leaning on the right, but what do you guys think? Is it a good operating point? It is a good operating point. It's a reasonable Q point. And, uh, uh, this basically means that your transistor is working as an amplifier right now. Okay, value of RB sets the value of IB, okay? Because remember, what, what, what was the equation that we got? IB equals to uh, VCC minus VBE over RB, correct? So the value of RB sets the value of IB, okay? Uh, and we just did that earlier that there's an inverse relationship. And also you have, and that sets the value of VCE and IC. Uh, and that's because your IC is equals to beta times IB. Okay, so you see how RB is an important factor here because it controls IB and IB controls IC and IC controls VCE. Okay, so everything is linked together. Now, circuit values affect the Q point, okay. Now here's the scenario over here. The, this, Q, this line over here, this load line is the same load line from the previous analysis. And then you see there's two more load line. One is over here and one is over here, okay? VCC one greater than VCC two greater than VCC three. What we are trying to say here is that you look at this parameter here if I change this value of VCC1, if I decrease VCC, say here VCC, VCC1 is 20 volts, I'm changing VCC1 to the new value of VCC1, which will be VCC2, uh, say 15 volts. What would happen to this point? Will this point go up or will this point go down, this Q point? Not the Q point, but basically just this end point. If I decrease the value of 15, uh, of the VCC to 15, goes RC down. is constant, goes down, right? If the numerator, if the numerator goes down, it will just keep on going down, right? And that's what is happening because VCC is greater than VC2 and VC2 is greater than VCC. If I keep on increasing this numerator, then the value will keep on decreasing. So therefore this point, will then appear over here and the further increase will take this to over here. And as this IC changes, as this IC changes, VCE also changes. 
So your Q point will move from here to here and then here to here. You see what's happening here? By ch just changing the values of VCC, you are changing your Q point. Earlier, it was over here. Just decreasing the value of VCC, it got here. And then further decreasing the value of VCC, it got here. What do you think, which one is the ideal? If I say this is one, this is two, this is three, which one is better? One, two, or three? What about two? Two looks good? Yeah, definitely two is a lot better, right? Because it's somewhere in the middle of the this bluish region. This whole bluish region, it's somewhere in the middle, okay? You can, if you like that to be somewhere over here, then again, you can, uh, whatever the VCC2 value was over here, you just change it a little bit, okay? And that's why if you ever wonder that, in most of the circuit that you have done in the lab, they use potentiometer. They use potentiometer instead of fixed resistor. Why they do that? So they do that so that they can change the values of these parameters, so they can change the Q points. You know, adjust the Q points. So it just, you know, these are the varying parameters that allow uh, these devices, such as op-amps or the transistors to change their operating points, okay? Okay, similarly here, we are keeping the VCC constant. VCC constant, we are just changing the value of RC, okay? This is, these are RC, okay? They're just naming a different R1, R2, R3, but basically they are RC. So, and then R3 is greater than R2, greater than R1, okay? So what is going to happen? So I'll say I'm looking at this point here. If I, if I increase, if I increase the value of R1, if I increase the value of R1, what is going to happen to this point? Is it gonna go down or go up? So if I increase the value of the resistance, because that's how it is over here, right? Then what's gonna happen? Then it's going to decrease, right? IC is going to decrease, which would mean the new endpoint will be this right here. And say if this R2 was two kilo ohm, now I am saying changing it to four kilo ohm, this Q point over here will then further decrease and get over here, okay? We're not changing VCE, VC is equals to VCC, and say VCC is if 16 volts, so it keeps constant over here. So initially, the Q point was this over here. Okay. Then after increasing by doubling the, uh, value of the resistance, V, it became less steepier. So the Q point was over here now. And then further increasing the value of the collector resistance, we got this line right here, okay? Which means the Q point will be over here. So IB is constant. Again, it comes from this value, IB equals to VCC minus uh, VBE over RB right, from the KVL equation that we got. So which one is better? If I say this is one, this is two, this is three, which Q point is better? Two is better, right? It's somewhere in the middle, perfectly, you know, in the middle and in, in the middle of the, the active region. So it's important how we can change this, these VCC and these RC values and RB values and change that cosine point. So extremely important. Okay, uh, circuit eff values affects the Q point also. Uh, similarly, you know, if you change the RB values, IB will change. If the IB will change, Q point will also change. So if I so say this is 10 microamps, this is 20 microamps, this is 30 uh, microamps. Again, IB is a VCC minus VBE over RB, right? By changing this value, uh, you can adjust the value of the uh, base current, right? By this base current. And then if the base current, say, is 10 microamps, then your Q point is this. If the base current is 20 microamps, then your Q point is over here. And similarly, the base current is 30 microamps, then your base current over here. So, um, it's hard to pick which one is a better Q point here, uh, but I think uh, they both are reasonable here with uh, uh, this one in the middle 
this probably would be my first option is right here okay mm -hmm.